We're back with another part of our John Haleywell of Super Tramp interview. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. The piano and even the quietest moments. Is that true that you that they really did put the piano up on the mountain? Yeah, the the piano uh, is 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 there in even in the quietest moments. Yeah, it, it's a real piano, and it was it was taken up on the mountain and left there overnight, and it actually did snow, so it, it's there. It's a real piano. It's not the piano that, that was on the uh, album at all, because you know that a piano on a mountain with snow overnight it really messes it up. So, yeah, but it looked good. It's quite good for doing autographs because you can write in the snow and, right. and, and you, you can see it. Yeah, there's snow across the. Oh, and by the way, is it on the wall there? I saw it. I'm trying to. Th- where is it? It's on the wall there someplace. You guys autographed it in. Oh yeah, right there. Of course, in the middle. You, but you guys autographed it in pen. I didn't get it. I bought it on eBay because I had to get. I was. Well, it, it, there's an interesting thing. I'm not going to tell you or your, your 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 viewers or listeners what it is, but you notice that there's some music on on the piano. Yeah. And it's called at the top. It's called Fool's Overture. Yep. Which Rogers Rogers number Fool's Overture. But, and I wrote that. That's I've got that on the wall here at home. That's my inscribing that tune. But it, but it's not the tune from Fool's Overture. It's a very very well known tune. And the fact that it's called Fool's Overture is is quite interesting and, and quite funny. And so what the people have got to do now is to delve into it and try and find out exactly what that tune is. I'm not going to tell you. Why, yada, yada. <laughs> okay. Were you surprised by the success of, uh, I mean, when you got, when you joined the band, all of a sudden the band changed. I mean, they were not the band that did indelibly stamped. Obviously members changed, but the sound, it was a dip. I mean, same guys, Roger and Rick, but, but that to me, when I went back, all fans in Canada, we bought crime of the century. And then, then we went, well, they've got two more of their albums. And the first reaction was always shock of going, like I remember listening to Potter, you know that heavy, heavy. My name is Potter, and I know that was the other yeah. singer. But I remember going, "That first of all, that's a great song. It's really grungy, but it's not what I'd expect from Supertramp." But when you joined, what was your impressions of the songs when you first joined? You're in this new band. You're twenty eight, twenty nine. They played some of the new songs when I went down, and uh, one of them was "From Now On." And I just was so struck with that song. Oh, yeah. That is a great one. Yeah. Now that didn't that didn't come on to uh, Crime of the Century. Yeah. That came on a subsequent album. But I was really impressed with the songs. And they were making uh, they I say Rick and Roger and Doogie. They got Bob in on drums. They got me. And then they were making a big effort to do something. It was make or break, particularly yeah. for, for Crime of the Century. Um, we got a, a, we got, got a new manager, and we we managed finally to get a really ace producer, Ken Scott. So that was what made that album different and, and heavier, more more relevant, perhaps for the times. And it was more like a concept album, and so it, it was different because because a big effort was made to make it as good as it possibly could be, and so that's what started us on that next stage of Supertramp's uh, existence. Uh, tell me about the Andy Scott song. What's it called? Aqua... I, I can't understand my own writing. Rail? Oh, yeah. Aqua, aquarelle. 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 Yeah. I really like that it's one. A, it's a ballad of his that, that he, he'd written, and, um, and, and and I like to play on it. And I just thought, well, I don't really need to play the tune on this, so we, we let the string quartet... Go, go ahead and, and do that so basically all, all I do not all but what I do on that is I let the string quartet play through the whole tune and then I take a chorus doing a, a solo yeah. and then join them in the, the last bit um, it, they're nice they're nice uh, changes to play on and he norm, sometimes he writes quite complex music like with the Lord Stackhouse music he wrote that for me a few years ago when I I played in a group of his, which he used to call Sax Assault. And it originally began with a group of 13 saxophone players and a rhythm section. Bowled it down to nine saxophone players and a rhythm. And we made made a couple of albums. And he he thought that 
they all used to call me Lord. They all still, they all call me Lord Stackhouse, my Lord, you know, all that business. So we made some fun of it. But then he wrote a number for me, which we played with that group. And uh, it's nice. It's a nice, tri- well, not a tribute to me, but it's just nice to have a number written for you. And, and it just turned out to be a nice ballad. And, it, uh, is Lord Stackhouse a song where, in the description, you put it, it's kind of it's it's more challenging to play? Is that the one in the in the? Yeah, well, he he, he, he writes he writes what I call adult chords, <laughs> it's just chords that are not just not just you don't just see C major. You see you see something like B flat minor flat five. You know sharp nine I went to, you see these chords and you think oh my goodness what is this and it, it needs just a little bit of, of thinking about to be able to uh, to play all of them so. S- speaking of Andy uh, how uh, how far back do you guys go and how do you meet with Andy yeah no, well uh, in the in the 90s we had a, a bit of a hiatus with Supertramp yeah. w- where we weren't working and um, I, f- I was living in um, California I had been living in California for 17 years, and I decided that maybe this is the time to go to music college and learn to play the saxophone after all these years. And so I applied to a a music college in Manchester in England, and uh, the Royal Northern College of Music. And myself and the family, we, we went back to England to live, so we actually re-emigrated or whatever you would call it so we went back to live there and uh, I went to I went to this college and it was there that I met Andy Scott and I met another guy called Rob Buckland who was who was the leader of the super big tramp band and I met both of those they play in a saxophone quartet called the Apollo saxophone quartet and really really nice guys and they'd just been to the college but they were associated with it and they were coming back as teachers and I got to know them, young young men to me, and th- in in both instances with both pi- both of the guys, they started to play the saxophone after listening to Supertram. So it, it, it was a weird symbiosis. They they were prompted to bring their careers uh, by listening to me, and then I ended up playing with them and doing projects with them. And so I've known him now for 25 or more years, Andy, and uh, and, and Rob as well. So it, it's that's how I met him. I've just and I've just hung out with them, went to their concerts, and it finally got to play with Andy's group. Se- oh, Sex Assault finally became known as Group S. So that, that's what it is nowadays. So. The saxophone group. That's his saxophone group. Oh, okay. Okay. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. Mm-hmm.